I always go on the old mat. <laughs> Show it and get up close. <laughs> I was going to take it. Is this the laurel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't see Heidi very well. Hold on. Get in between them, too. Well, let's go over a little bit. Oh, they're not even ready. Okay, oh, that's you perfect, want the shots. you guys. Okay, I'm taking now. Look at me. Okay, one more. <laughs> Everyone looking? Cute. Okay, one more. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is <laughs> Ready? Okay. Natalie, are you my mates. Tipsy cool. All right. All right, here we go. Hey, we can't see Amy's hand. <laughs> Jess? Black flag in the gym. <laughs> Jessica, where's your hand? Okay, go like on, this. Come on, come on. Arms are front. Oh, okay. Lauren, fix your visor. <laughs> come on, my visor. Tip, tip, tip. Here, use okay. mine. Silly, silly. What does it mean when it's flashing 25? It means we're almost oh, out of film. One more for Casey. Bring it. Uh, okay, now do your Nordstrom slack. Everybody do a pose. Nice butt. Oh. <laughs> LDS. Oh. That's good. That's good. Let's go swimming. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I'll go like this. She's laughing. Hurry! Well, this is not my kid. I'll take a picture no. now. It's just a minute. Oh. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, no, a car! A car! Oh, it's Kent! Hi, Kent! Hi! Wait, you guys, Is that on? Yeah. Well, let me see! <laughs> let me. Is it on? Okay, I'm gonna take a picture. Yeah, it says record. Okay, I'll record him. <laughs> okay, you guys. Me do? No, go like this. Hi, babe! Oh, watch out, watch out. <laughs> come on! Wait, Heidi, come here. What are we gonna do? Oh, look at those rats. Oh, yeah. Do kind of like that? Only you go. <laughs> okay. Listen, we'll do, we'll do kind of like that. Oh, look at that pretty one. Uh, and look at the roach. Oh! Come on, General. We got it, Heidi. Hey, Heidi, come on. Guys, that's really cute. That's the best. <laughs> Wait, me and Heidi need to take one. Look at those pretty people. They should splash their legs. Come on, do something wild. Do something wild. Find your legs, Come on. Get on her shoulders. Yeah, get on her shoulders. And then she should go like this. Just do it. Yeah, look at me. No. Okay. 24, is that the last picture? It'll stop. It'll like just freeze. That's the last picture. Cute. Julie, go take the picture with your mom. Any more? Lisa and Amy, you guys want one together? Sister Adams. Are we doing a pyramid or not? Yeah, pyramid. After you, after you die. Yeah, Bishop. Whoa, Bishop. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, here comes Sheree. That's Sheree. That's Sheree. Okay, here we come. Tammy, okay, the next two are ours. Here they come. Those are ours. How'd you like them? Yes. That's Heidi. All right, Heidi. Oh my God. 
Here we come, two. That's Natalie. Yep. Pick it, Natalie. Right, Natalie. Okay, here's Sith. It's orange. When you watch people do this. No, Tatum. Oh, go Tatum. Go Tatum. How was it, Tatum? Right here. What am I? I like Who is that? That's Julie. It's Julie. <laughs> Here comes Jen. You gotta do that. Yeah. Which side is she on? The other side. There's Jennifer in the shorts. You have to close your eyes. JJ, how was it? a lot of Didn't weather there, know. Tatum. That's not absolute, but you probably won't because that's a physical kind of pain, and those physical kinds of feelings will be disassociated and forgotten or pushed back in the memory. And so the more stress that you get, the less you want to use that particular sense, and the more you will begin to favor the other two, until finally most people end up on just one sense, and they favor only one of those senses instead of all three. The goal, of course, by the time we get through here is you'll understand would be to be able to understand all three of them and be able to communicate well with all three. But sometimes what happens is we'll meet someone and we won't get along with them and we won't quite know and we'll just say, well, it's a personality conflict. Well, tonight we're going to talk about that and explain why we have personality conflicts and exactly what those personality conflicts really mean and how to overcome those. So you can get along with anybody that walks through the door. It doesn't matter what personality they are. Does that sound like a good idea? Sounds like a great idea. Okay. What we're going to talk about first is we're going to take all three of these senses, and we're going to call them patterns tonight, and we're going to take all three of these, and we're going to, we're going to name 30 different items that each person does, or something that is one of their attributes, and we're going to see how the different personalities of these three different uh, patterns um, treat each, uh, each of these 30 items. So let's start at the top. Let's start first with number one. Suppose you're meeting someone for the first time. They walk in your door as a customer. But the first thing you'll probably notice is their clothes. And as you notice their clothes, 
uh, their clothes tell you a story about them. The first story that it tells you is they're either visual, kinesthetic, or auditory. One of those three. And the easiest sense uh, to determine, the easiest pattern to find, is the visual. Because the visual will always walk in dressed to the hill. They'll always, they will almost never dress down. They'll always wear a suit or a tie if it's a man or a lady will almost always wear a dress. They will probably never be caught dead in public in sweats because they don't want to look bad. Maybe only designer sweats. Maybe designer sweats, <laughs> right. If they do wear sweats. That's right. I do have a pair of designer sweats. Right. So you're a visual person. Well, we'll probably we'll get more into that. And yes, I am quite visual. But I've tried to develop the other two. Okay. The auditory, the way they treat clothing is is a kind of a haphazard way. Clothing is not really important to them because it's not a logical thing. Remember, the auditory stores logical information and sound in their subconscious, and those are the things that are most easily brought back into their current memory. And uh, since uh, clothes aren't particularly important, I mean, they're important to be clothed, but, but what you look like isn't important. How you think isn't really important to the auditory. That's the most important part. And so clothing, now becomes very different for the visual and the, and the auditory. The kinesthetic then does the same thing as the visual, only in the opposite direction. The kinesthetic wants to be comfortable. They store in feelings, and their most important aspect of anything they do is how they feel. And so because of that, they want to dress comfortably. No matter what they're doing, no matter where they are, they're going to be comfortable. They're going to wear the kinds of clothes that make them comfortable. If they have to wear a tie to the office, a kinesthetic man will probably almost always wear a knit tie. Probably never wear a silk tie. So if a guy walks through the door and he's got a knit tie on, he's probably a kinesthetic. Now, each one of these things as I go through, the first thing is being clothing. Each one of these 30 things as I go through is going to be important because you can't determine a person's personality on just one item. Uh, one item is going to throw you off because people are just a little bit haywire. In some respects. But if you take half a dozen of them, you probably, you've got a pretty good chance of figuring out what somebody is. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing then being clothing. The next thing that you'll notice about someone will probably be their hair. Whether their hair is in place or not. If they just walked in and it's not a windy day and their hair's a mess, you'll know right off that they're not a visual. Because a visual would never walk in someplace with their hair a mess. They'd sit in a car and fix their hair before they'd come in. They want to look good at all times. The auditory, it may be a mess or it may not be a mess. It's not particularly important. And the kinesthetic, uh, they're going to have a different hairstyle altogether. It may be a mess, but it may look fine. They're usually the people who, on women, have those tight little curls, what do you call those? Uh, like, a, like an Afro hairstyle, mm -hmm. where uh, it's a kind of a wash and wear hairstyle, where they wash it and, and shake and it. Shake it. And that's it. And that's it. And they're done. It looks okay. It's comfortable. Yeah. But yeah. That's nope, the kinesthetic. No problem here. Now the visual's going to use hairspray. Kinesthetic <laughs> will never use hairspray. And the auditory might use it if it's appropriate. Okay. So that's hair. Now you've got clothes and hair. The third thing that we're going to talk about now is you're going to get up and you're going to shake their hand, right? The way they shake their hand. Now let me shake your hand, for instance. That's a nice firm handshake. Now a visual is going to shake hands quite the way you do. A visual is going to let the person know that they're there. They're going to shake hands firmly, quickly, and it's going to be over. In the auditory, you probably want to shake hands at all. You probably walk in a room, shaking hands with a man, and his wife didn't even shake hands with him. It's probably because she was an auditory. Not because she didn't want to shake hands with you. Well, maybe a little bit, because auditory sometimes think, and I had a secretary who was like this, she thought that if if, if somebody wanted to shake hands with you, they were just weird. And it was a weird custom. And it was something that was strange. And I confronted her with it one time, and she said, well, why, why would I want to touch you, somebody, shake hands with somebody that I don't know? I mean, they, they might have cooties. That's right. I mean, <laughs> and, I'm not wild about it, but I do it as a business practice. That's right. Okay. But an auditory, <laughs> sometimes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But an auditory sometimes won't even shake hands. And if they do shake hands, this is the kind of handshake they'll give you. One of those yes. limp dead fish mm -hmm. handshakes. The kind that your mom always taught you, don't ever give that kind of handshake. Right? My mom taught me that. 
you slow while you're there. Now, the kinesthetic, on the other hand, they're going to give you a handshake which is more like this. Two hands, and it's mm -hmm. going to be firm. It might even be long, and they're going to let you know. I met a guy just the other day who did that. I just, I never met him before in my life, and he walked up and he says, Hi, you're a kid Adams. And he shook my hand with both hands, and I thought, this is really weird. Because it doesn't happen very often, mm -hmm. but it does happen once in a while. And that's when they're most comfortable, is when they're shaking hands with your hands. They may shake hands if they know you real well. They may shake your hand and pat you on the shoulder. Right. Or they may grab you and hug you, which is the next item on the list, is a hug. A visual might hug you, but if they're going to hug you, they're going to hug you up high. They're just going to kind of pull you in and hug you like this. An auditory problem will hug you at all, even if you're their best friend and you haven't seen them for a long time. They might shake your hand at that point. They won't hug you. But the, but the kinesthetic, they're going to give you a big hug, and they're going to give you a full body hug. I mean, they're going to bring you in just like a big bear, give you a big bear hug. So that's the kinesthetic. Okay. Keep in mind, they like to be touched. They like that body contact where the auditory is hanging. Okay. That's hug. Now, while you're meeting them, you're going to notice something about their voice. Uh, their voices are quite different. The visual's voice is usually higher in pitch, and if it's not higher in pitch, then it's just a little bit nasal. Okay. And the auditory is l just a little bit lower, just a little bit more rounded voice. They're better singers because they have better voices. In the kinesthetic, their voice is It'll be generally really low. In fact, you might even find them singing all the time. You might know, think they're singing when they're not singing because their voice is so low and so deep. And this goes for men and women. Their voices tend to drop octaves as they go through the different patterns. Okay. So that's the voice. Six. But we're rushing right through this. Well, I hope you don't extend and remember all these. Well, that's why you're supposed to be taking notes and you're not taking that's right. Cause That's I okay. I'll give you a copy of my notes. Right. We'll get that. Because I have a tendency to want to take notes and then I can't remember what you tell me. Okay. It's easier for me to take the tape. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm going to give you my notes. notes when we get done. I'll give you a copy of these notes. Okay, the next thing is talking. When, when a visual is talking, they have to be looking at you. Um, when I was a little kid, my dad was a visual. And he would say, Look at me when I talk to you. What about people um, that won't look at you no matter what? Well, I mean, I've known people. Auditories have a problem with looking at people, uh, but not as big a problem as kinesthetics. No, auditories will will sit here and look away. You know, they'll talk to you and they'll just kind of gaze out the window. No, I mean I know people that. But it's like kinesthetics. Talk to kinesthetics. Well, not the kinesthetics. Kinesthetics aren't even in the same room sometimes. My wife is almost purely kinesthetic. And what she'll do sometimes is she'll ask me a question, and then she'll walk in the other room. And well, that's expect, okay. And expect me to answer. Well, that's all right. I'm mm -hmm. talking about when you go out on a business meeting or oh. something, and they're sitting across from you, and they still don't make eye contact. Well, those people are just plain weird. <laughs> well, I know, I've know i known people like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just a habit. Or, they, or they'll look right through you and not even see you. I've had people like that. That's easier for me to deal with than someone that just won't look you in the eye. They may high when they first see you, and then after that, I don't even have. They're a probably look. auditory. Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because they're uh, they're just <clears throat> a little bit timid. Auditories tend to be just a little bit timid when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one situation. Absolutely. And the reason for that is because they deal better with numbers and sounds than they do with people. Mm, that's why they like to sit on this side so they don't have to look that's right. you in the eye. That's right. They can just. Stare off in space and keep talking. So that's right. So they're probably an auditory mm -hmm. if they don't ever look at you during the whole conversation. Right. I had a sales presentation like that. Mm -hmm. The guy wouldn't look at me. The guy wouldn't talk to me. His wife did all the talking. This is when I was selling time sharing, and I, that's like selling cars. You know, that's who you sell. You know, it's right across the table. It's real close. It's real fast, and everything comes up. And then I couldn't sell this guy because he wouldn't even look at me. He was just there for his free gift. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into that. A more about auditories too. Okay. Uh, talking, okay. Uh, the next thing is uh, listening. When, when uh, uh, a visual is listening to you, if they're really intent and they can't hear you, they'll go like this. They'll lean their head forward 
and, and sometimes they're leaning all body forward because if they can't see what you're saying because they can't see what you're saying right that's <laughs> right. it you got it okay the auditory on the other hand uh, and you may have seen uh, John Cook do this um, he'll sometimes they'll go like this I had a girlfriend in high school that did this and I never knew why until a couple of years ago when I learned all this stuff but she would she turned her ear to me, and I thought she was being rude because she was kind of turning her head to me. But she was really being interested because she was trying to hear everything I said. Mm -hmm. She's pointing her ear at me. In fact, John Cook, what he does is he'll go just like that. Yeah, he does all the time. Because he's really hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. Besides, besides everything else. But uh, that's what the auditories will do. And the kinesthetics, they'll just try to get closer. You know, they'll get they'll get the whole body closer to you. So communicate they well, want to get their whole body into but I find most auditories what they're really doing is talking and they really don't much care what you have to say anyway I find that they don't look you in the eye they don't really that's true I find auditories are mostly self-centered people now that's what I have found they're not really what they are most of the time is real shy and and they hide that shyness with a cocky attitude, uh, I'm just a little bit better, but they're really scared to death deep down inside because they don't they 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 may not be prepared for what you say next, and they have to be thinking about that, and they have to be plotting and planning that out. And so don't worry about auditories, but except that they are plotting and planning in advance. When uh, <clears throat> answering questions, when the visual answers questions, uh, they'll give you the whole story. They'll give you everything you needed to know and more. They'll tell you, for instance, if they said, uh, that's a pretty neat dress uh, you have on and, and you're a visual, you'd be telling me, I'd say, where'd you get it? You'd say, well, I went to uh, Nordstrom's and they didn't have one. I like this. I loved it, but they didn't have one. So I went over to uh, uh, this other store at the mall and, and they didn't have one either. And you know what? On the way, I saw this auto rack. And this guy was uh, really hurt bad. But anyway, and then I went to see, and they'll go through the whole story, and then finally they'll get to the place where you bought the dress. And you'll say, and that's where I bought the dress. Like, uh, uh, so they'll give you just too much. They, it's like a mind dump. Everything comes out. You ask them a question. I know. They you tell ask them you. what time, and they tell you how to build a wall. That's right. They're the ones. Okay. The auditory, if they really want to tell you, they'll tell you. If they don't, they won't. An auditory is the kind of person who, if I said, and you are an auditory, and I said, that's pretty crisp what you get it, you'd say. What dress? <laughs> yeah, or it's none of your business, or. You know uh, what I find most or of Or I bought it at Nordstrom's. I find whatever. most of them pretend just like you didn't even ask the question, and they change the subject. Like that's right, say, they will do that. You, what, what, what did you do today, or what, uh, something like that, and they'll say, uh, you know, the stock market uh, didn't do too well today, and it, it really um, is interesting to me how a person can hear you ask them a question, and it's just like you never asked that question. Because, yeah. I, I think, it, you know, if I sometimes wish I had that ability, but I just can't do it. If somebody asks me a question, I'm going to give them an answer. Oh, yeah. You know, I might not tell them what they want to hear. The auditories have a real problem, like I said, with they do. Okay. Uh, now, not all the time. Some of them, some of them are real good listeners, mm -hmm. and they won't talk at all. They'll just keep it quiet, and they won't say a word. That, and we'll get into a little bit more about that later too. But the kinesthetics, what were we talking about? Oh, answering questions. Well, vi the visuals then give you a mind dump. The auditories don't give you anything. And the kinesthetics, it, it kind of depends on your person. If, mm -hmm. if they're real friendly with you, if you're friends and you've been friends for a long time, they might give you a mind dump. Right. But if you're not, then they might keep. They might just clam up. Okay. I mean, I had a client today. She told me what price house, everything that she wanted, what area, and I was asking her for the down payment. You know, how much have you saved? She's a first time home buyer. Well, we have plenty. And I said, well, you know, some people think that um, the down payment they don't think about the closing cost. She said, it is no problem. Believe me, we have plenty. And I said, okay, if you want me to guess. I said, fine. Do you have $15,000? Well, 
She says, yes, that and more. We have plenty. And I have a hard time dealing with someone like that. Well, I'll tell you what I do. And I had one like this uh, just a couple of weeks ago where the man, it was a man, and he did the same thing. And I said, you know, only it wasn't down payment, it was purchase price. Mm -hmm. and I said, oh, I have that too. I said, well, how much do you really want to spend on your new home? And he said, well, whatever it costs. I had one just And I yesterday. said, well, does that mean that you'll spend uh, $100,000? He said, I, I could spend 100000 I said, uh, okay, well, then could you spend a million dollars? Well, no, I would never spend a million dollars for a house. I said, well, then there is a difference then between 100000 and a million, and I'm trying to figure out what I should look for for you so I can find the right house because I can't until I know. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one that. And he still didn't tell right. me. Right. I have one that still didn't tell me. Yeah. And I went from 400000 to 100000 And he says, if you find me something at 400000 I like, I can buy it. Or I could buy something for 150 We're going to get more into real estate than that in just a minute here. It's very difficult to deal with people like that. Yeah, they are. And they're all over the place now. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that in a minute, too. Uh, after answering questions, the next thing you'll notice is, is their eye movement. You probably, a lot of people have talked about eye movement. Yeah. Up and left, up and right, back and forth. To the, now, up and left does not necessarily mean that they're, you know, I don't know how much you know about this one, better start getting this. Right. Eye movement, uh, if they're looking up and to the left, that means that they are, generally speaking, they are accessing their memory and mm -hmm. finding a picture of something that they can see that is the answer to the question. Now, if they're looking up and the other way, up and to the right, That's they're probably good. creating something. Mm -hmm. they're, they've looked up here and there's nothing there. And so it's like saying, well, if, what color is your new car? And it's red. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, if it were blue, what would it look like? Then they would be looking up to the other side to try and create right. that picture for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's, that's how the visuals generally look. The auditories look to the side. They look almost to their ear, almost as though they were trying to hear what it sounded like before they said it. And this is the creation side, excuse me, this is the memory side, and this is the creation side again. So when you look at somebody, keep that in mind. Now, kinesthetics are a little bit weird because what kinesthetics will do is they ask them a question, they'll be accessing their feelings. They'll be looking down and right, and looking down to see what it feels mm -hmm. like, or to feel what it feels like is more like it. They want to know what it feels like before they answer the question. And that will, whatever they see, they may even look up, they may look to the side either way, it doesn't matter. The last thing they'll do is they'll look down because they want to know how it makes them feel before they answer. So do you think this means that you can't look straight ahead and think at the same time? No, because a lot of people do that. What I'm saying is this is a generality, just like mm -hmm. everything else, but it works. What happens is some people will know you're looking at their eyes, and they will not look away no matter what. Mm -hmm. But it makes it real hard on them to try and think. Mm -hmm. because That's what, that, I, that was my question. <laughs> because, because it's they, hard to think. Because they should be looking up here, and, and, and they mm -hmm. can't because they're concentrating so hard on looking straight at right. In fact, Remember what I said about my dad saying, mm -hmm. look like at me, me when I talk right. to you? Well, uh, that's what he wanted me to do. You're about the only people I know of would do that are people from outer space. You know, or people who know you're looking at their eyes. <laughs> and so you, you can't... Well, at least, them. though, when you talk to someone, especially if you're talking to a child, you want them to acknowledge that they've heard what you that's said right. by briefly looking your way. Sure. I mean, I, I would think that that would be the case. Because otherwise, if they don't say, or you're not sure they heard you. Right. Okay, the next item on here besides eyes. Now, oh, a couple more points on the eyes. Sometimes people, left-handed people, for instance, people who favor their left hand, mm -hmm. store opposite directions. For instance, normal right-handed people create on their left side, and left-handed people create on their right side. So. You might notice which hand they favor before uh, before you uh, access their eyes. You know, look at their eyes because if they're if they're writing with their left hand, then they're probably going to store the opposite direction. 
And another caution, you know, is not that not to ever use this one alone, just like the rest of them, because I know a guy who is is totally right-handed, and he his memory, his his picture is on the side, and so. And I said to him the other day, I said, you know, Tony, I said, you store backwards. <laughs> we had a little discussion about it. He mm -hmm. laughed, and uh, and he understands that that he does. He stores differently than everybody else. My daughter is left-handed. She stores the same way he does. But nobody, uh, not very many people do that. Mm -hmm. Most people store the way we talked about. It. And what about the blinker? I understand that you can't think and blink at the same time. No, no, that's not true. Couldn't, and I have people. <clears throat> I don't understand why they're all going like this. I mean, well, sometimes people do that because they have an allergy. Well, that could be true, but I mean, I and, and, some, people and I've seen people blink, that have twitch. Blink, blink. Yeah, but at the same time, you no, know, I think you need to blink sooner or later. Everybody. Needs oh, to sure, blink. but I meant. See, blinking is is like your heartbeat. Blinking is like your pulse. It's it's like it's like growing hair and fingernails and new skin. It's one of those things that your subconscious takes care of. You know, it's well, not something that you can't think about. Mm -hmm. Well, I can recall when there was a television program about it, and it mentioned that they had proven that you couldn't think and blink rapidly at the same time. And I happened to know someone that did that, and I thought, isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> well, they know, huh? Okay. All right. But I didn't know if you heard anything about their rapid eye movement like that. No, I, I do, however, know that it is something that's controlled by your subconscious, not by your conscious. However, you can control the subconscious mm -hmm. mind, but it's something that's generally controlled by your subconscious. So you don't need to worry about it. Most people can think. And we'll talk to a little bit more about that later, too. In the 30s, you can understand a lot more about a lot of little things that you wonder. And you'll say, oh, yeah, I, I understand that's easy. Okay. Uh, the next item, <coughs> I move it on. Breathing. Next item is breathing. When a visual breathes, they will breathe in the top of their lungs. And so you can almost always see their breathing in their chest. A woman's easiest, of course. But a man, you almost have to, if, if he's wearing a jacket, it's real tough. He's not wearing a jacket, just a shirt. You, know, you kind of defocus and watch his chest expand sideways. And uh, uh, if, if they're a visual, they're going to breathe high in their chest. And so a woman's going to breathe like this, and a man's going to breathe like this. But if they're an auditory, they're going to breathe just a little bit lower. Remember what we said about voice? The visual's voice is high or nasal. Well, that's partly because of his breathing. His breathing is so high that it pushes his voice out higher, or her voice out higher. And so we have those visuals that are more often sopranos, singers, if they sing at all. Uh, and, and men who sing tenor are more often visuals than the bass, because those are more often the, the auditory camps uh, because they breathe lower. The auditories breathe in the midsection. They breathe a little bit out of their stomach, so it's a little bit lower, uh, which means that they're never going to have real strong chest muscles, and they're going to always have kind of a gut hanging out because they breathe lower. And the kinesthetics are even worse. Their gut's going to get, they breathe even lower. They breathe way, way down low, and that's why their voice is lower on, on males and on females. But go back to the physical appearance. I it's my understanding that the lower you breathe, the better it is for you. Well, that's what...